This is how I sculpted a stylized pavement texture in Blender using the instancing method. I'll show you the workflow, the export chaos, and how to avoid the dumb mistakes I made. Or at least judge them in the comments. So what is instancing? In Blender, it's like telling 20 duplicates to just trust that the original knows what it's doing. Let's visualize this. Throw away the cube and spawn in a plane. And for demonstrating, I'll summon Suzanne over here. For instancing to happen, you need to parent the object that you want to duplicate to the object that you want to duplicate with. In this case, I will parent Suzanne to the plane by selecting Suzanne first, then the plane, then click Ctrl P. You should see the dotted line form between the two. Now we go to Object Properties on the right here and find the Instancing tab. You have two options here, Vertex or Plane, and it kinda depends on which one you prefer, but they're pretty self-explanatory. If you choose Vertex, each vertex your plane has will get a duplicate of your original mesh. You can have multiple original objects that you can duplicate on the same parent object, which is why we can use this for creating a seamless pattern. For example, you can just duplicate the original by clicking Shift D, and now you have two separate originals that have duplicates that you can edit independently. Now that we have the knowledge, let's do the thing. We start with the same plane basically, which can be pretty much considered our texture size. In order to visualize the pattern correctly, I will duplicate this plane around, select all, and merge together so we have one plane that's three times bigger than our texture size. Then I can add my stone, parent it to the plane, turn on instancing and then basically just copy this one stone and start slowly but surely creating my pattern. I am doing this first so I can see how the pattern looks and then I can start sculpting each individual stone. Listen, I did reuse some stones where I could, but still, this shit took a ridiculous amount of time. Listen man, I really need that recovery file. You still have it, right? Yes. I can't find it though, where is it? No. No. So, my blender crashed so hard, I lost two hours of work into the void that I could never recover. So don't do that. Here's what actually works. Step 1. Make instances real. It sounds magical, it's not. It just turns your fake clones into real objects. We're not done yet though. Because the original meshes are secretly controlling everything like evil puppet masters. You have to clear all parents to fully detach the object from their instancing roots. At this point, you can also hide your original object so it doesn't get in the way. And lastly, to make sure your geometry is clean and to avoid any blender meltdowns, select everything, hit F3 again, and choose make single object. I've noticed that if I don't do this, I can't apply any transforms to my meshes. Then and only then, Blender lets you export without exploding. This is the part of the video where I recognize my shortcomings and I fully admit that I don't know how to make Blender not duplicate the original mesh. So as you can see, I have these duplicates chilling here in the middle of overlapping the original pattern. So I had to manually delete them. I'm sorry. As for the low poly to bake my texture on, I will use the initial plane that I used as parent for instancing.
Okay, now we finally have a mesh that is good enough for export. After the purge, I exported both high and low poly meshes and imported them into Substance Painter. Finally, peace. Baking was smooth and the stylized texture came together pretty easily. Because you know, when you've already suffered through sculpting and squishing the whole lamp thing into a seamless pattern, everything else feels kind of relaxing, really. So here's the result, a handcrafted, seamless, stylized pavement texture, made entirely out of sculpted blocks and perseverance. Would I do it again? Absolutely. Will you learn something from this? I hope so. If this helped, or if you just enjoyed watching me figure shit out as I go, drop a like, leave a comment, or tell me your worst blender crash story below. Misery loves company.